Hey there everyone, it's Dr. Rich. Um, I just um, wrote a letter to my landlord. Um, this heinous oppression. Now what would you do in this situation? My landlord is named Hung. Hung Ho. And um, he rents this place to me, but I haven't paid rent in about three months. I've lived on $22,000 in a whole year since I survived a fatal injury in a hospital that was covered by the government and that was caused by the government. And I said to him, Hi Hung, that's it. I have nothing. I'm brain damaged and victimized, vilified, publicly humiliated and persecuted that goes against the Charter of Human Rights of people with a disability by many, many, many public officials deemed as public officers that are bound to act within that law. I cannot go to police to report rape, murder, tax evasion, fraud, coercion, um, theft of motor vehicle, theft of phone, anything. I can't complain. Health Complaints Commissioner, APRA, um, Australian Human Rights Commission. I can't complain anywhere. Ombudsman's. I cannot be a whistleblower at APRA, at ASIC, at the Federal Ombudsman, and um, anywhere. I can't be a whistleblower. They've rejected it. I cannot go to an Ombudsman anywhere for my many justice issues. The officer of the Prime Minister and Cabinet have refused my freedom of, of information. That's how height goes. My former partner, Steve Isonides, left me with his um, dying dog as he exploited me, my nest egg, whilst he worked for ASIO and he um, feathered his own financial nest on about 300 grand a year. And um, he feathered his own nest and he owes me and still owes me to this day a legal and just and equitable financial settlement. I estimate that. It's hard to know, but about half a million dollars. No single lawyer in the world will take that on. Why is that? Steve Isonides, hi Steve, admitted to me he was present at a murder, a Collingwood um, um, flats, and there were three of them. It was a Vietnamese guy that was killed, and um, they shot him, and the three of them escaped in a getaway car. While I was with him from 2010, he told me he had a house in Abbotsford. Check the records, it'll be there. And that further, he um, made the money for that house selling cocaine. He used to um, go up to Broome um, to pick up kilos of cocaine and drive it down the west coast to Perth. Um, I know a lot of things about him. Um, anyway, um, he sold that. Uh, he went to he went to drug rehab, but there he just learned to be a better criminal. He didn't go to jail, um, and he wasn't caught. And he sold that house from proceeds of crime for one point two million dollars. We celebrated in 2010 and um, unbeknownst to me, he invested that money in an illegal offshore tax haven in order to get a high return. Um, I still have the documents. Um, uh, yeah, so um, he worked for Apple for Steve Jobs, criminal mastermind, charming bloke evil <laughs> and um, he then worked for 
ASIO, the Australian Secret Intelligence Service. Now, they caught him embezzling the money and his accountant has emailed me to say um, when we were going to buy a house together and he wanted to get the money out and he wanted to give uh, $50,000 each to his um, his nephew Steve and that it didn't work and that I actually have a recording of him admitting to me that he was caught and that um, uh, he has nothing and he actually owed a $200,000 tax bill to the tax office and that was his penance for investing $1.2 million now in an illegal offshore tax haven slap on the wrist as opposed to jail time people with money look after people with money um, now further in my message to um, Hung I lost uh, first of all $75,000 in a prejudiced um, case with um, um, my income assist because I was framed in two vocate cases in actual fact I tried to get an atonement from Steve and he threatened a hitman on me he stole my car he stole all my white goods he left me homeless and squatting and he twisted my mind that much that he made me believe that it was okay to kill someone and that's not right um so further to that i worked my way back up but all the while i was fighting all these tandem cases now within that time of being framed with two vocat cases which made my vocat work with my ndis clients illegitimate um i was stressed i was realized i was systemically oppressed and gaslighted i didn't quite know how yet and um, I had a break from work. Well, the income assist didn't pay. It's been a year. They've banned me. Sheena Jack, the CEO, she's been caught fraud, fraud, fraud um, doctoring documents. Um, I threatened to sue her, but they well know. I can't go to the police. I can't be a whistleblower. And I can't get a lawyer. So I lost a million dollars at the Australian Human Rights Centre for a failed... Um, conciliation which they free kicked to the other team um afka tim goss and peter fisher knew very well back in 2017 i was financially bereft um and if someone's under financial duress they have to come to a determination within four weeks mine took two years they watched me burn with hcf and work cover and framed by all the other um, systemic oppressions and um, omissions that public officials rejected to act on, um, I was scapegoated and um, they watched me as I suffered and threatened Steve with blowing the whistle on him being in a murder. And he, he angrily sent me a um, message on the website saying... Um, Where's your evidence from concerned friend? And if you don't bring me the evidence by Monday, I'm going to report you to the NDIA and all your agencies. Typical. Um, and that's how a conspiracy is born. To protect murders and protect pedophiles. Now, I lost one to two million dollars at AFCA because I blew the whistle on Tim Goss and Peter Fisher. On... A YouTube video. I've just joined LinkedIn Premium. Oh, you should see all the Afghan ombudsmen and um, APRA lawyers looking at my case. Um, so I lost income protection when I left work, and that was due to me being framed, exploited, and amplified the distress of the non acknowledgement of my own child sexual abuse case, which I learned of or acknowledged or consciously named for myself in my recovery that was a delayed response when I was about 44. Now, the 
the AAT, um, under the Attorney General, Michaelia Cash, still to this day conspire to delay, defer and deny any prosperity through my work cover claim, my valid and just work cover claim for being an employee of the NDIAS with a contract and a social security number and they're picking holes in the legislation I don't understand and it is illegal, inequitable and against the Charter of Human Rights that says we must have access to the law that um, um, they're still going ahead with it. But the Attorney General already knows, because I told it, and I emailed her and she emailed me back, told me to go to Lifeline, about the corruption at AFCA, at APRA, at Comcare, at AAT. Sends me to Lifeline. Because you know why? People see an illness. They don't see justice like I do. They see a label. And I am a sentient, multi-dimensional being. So the government basically murdered me because the family um, were on the side of the psychiatrist locking me up. They denied my justice because I think they believe that I was a burden to be rid of and every year they wrote to Steve Isonides for Christmas and said, thanks for looking after Rich. Um, it's a brutal assessment of um, someone's life when you've achieved so much as I have. So the government basically oppressed me through systemic organisations and by robbing me financially via detriment and um, neglecting any prosperity that was coming my way that led to a distress, yes, but it was poverty. It wasn't a mental illness. And that's where HCF got it wrong. And um, further to that, I was hospitalised and I had proven beyond reasonable doubt that not one person in the world had my back and they still don't. The government basically murdered me via systemic, silent um, oppression via proxy that attacked me and character assassinated me. Then, when after my suicide attempt occurred, which was due to malpractice and neglect and oppression from Dr. Kumar, who know well of um, Stephen Isonides because he knew um, that situation because I saw that psychiatrist 13 years prior. They dumped me in the community, opposing all human dignity and the way to release someone into the community via an ethical standard with no job, no money, no car, no food, squatting. And the day I got back, Dad said, pay your own rent. And then I begged everyone to try and stand up for me. That's horrible what happened to Rich. He was systemically oppressed for making a valid complaint about a GP and he after my death or that what was considered a fatal injury and a lethal attempt and I was rejected I was the only one to stand up for me in defense of my murder and um, further to that the doctor um, is to this day a sole trader and not registered for GST. He's not registered at APRA. And the following people got my evidence and they silenced it. APRA, the police, NHP OPC, IBAC, the Victorian Inspectorate, the Ombudsman, the police, the Federal Police, 
even Greg Hunt wrote me a letter and just fobbed it off. Now, um, so the government had basically murdered me and dumped me and then I fought valiantly by myself on my own with an acquired brain injury in utter poverty to, um, to oppose my own murder. Now, it might have been a, a conspiracy to manslaughter seeing as I was accidentally found with no observable pulse and unresponsive. That's fairly dead. Who covered that up? Was the Health Complaints Commissioner, the hospital, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner and Commissioner Jennings, and also um, Ben Calder of the Commonwealth Ombudsman. So not only has the government conspired to distress me, rob me, via detriment, and via systemic attacks via proxy that are all linked back into the covering up of the murder and the covering up of the pedophiles. Um, they then went ahead and covered it up. So, um, I, I actually forgave everyone in my suicide note. And, um, uh, I wished them well. And I died broken hearted. That took a lot. Um, but I'm well aware I have a brain injury now. I can't think. I'm a different person. The person you knew has gone. The Rich McLean you knew, or you wanted him to be, no longer exists. Um, in a whole year, they have denied me access to a saltwater clinic, the arm of the hospital, which is supposed to legally care for me. They've rejected my medication, which I needed. And I begged for an atonement in a humble way, a mere token acknowledgement that this tragedy occurred. And the hospital CEO, Dave Stevenson, told me to sue him directly and personally, knowing full well that the ombudsman, the government who had killed me in his hospital, had covered it up. It was whitewashed. Um, in that year, I have suffered incredible oppression and distress, a vile sense of um, injustice, and a heinous and ungodly victimization of me, Dr. Rich McLean. I have not seen one psychologist in that whole time. Saltwater Clinic, um, backed by my caring parents who see illness, not justice, have acted in congruence with the police who I can't even report rape or murder to or anything else, which I've proven on killing.info. And um, I've been hospitalised another two times. I've just got out again. I had to escape from oppression um, from the police and a psychiatrist who I had never even met. And they incarcerated me under the Mental Health Act. They said I had delusions of persecution. You know, there's an old saying that says um, madness in individuals is rare, but in society, it's the norm. So after the suicide, and also after my business, richmclean.com.au, a labour of love for 20 years... Um, was intentionally, maliciously, callously, and 
intentionally desecrated and destroyed all the backups gone all the emails gone all the evidence before a court that is a crime in itself and that happened and the um business.gov didn't care and business.gov that au didn't care and the and the um small family and business ombudsman didn't care and the telecommunications industry ombudsman didn't care and the cybercrime watch covered it up and the police covered it up um I found out that I was framed after my suicide by the GP's lawyer, Dr. Ball, and he framed me as a criminal extortionist internally to government agencies that all were paid like whores for towing the government line to silence me in, 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 in preference to protecting that doctor and to protecting um, the murderous intent of Steve Osnides and the um, pedophile that abused me. And you know what? It was like believed through half-truths because faction is half fiction, half fact. And the way they exploited me was that I got very close to Mr. Osnides and he knows all of my um, vulnerabilities and I have publicly acknowledged I'm not straight I've used drugs and I've had regretful sex and um, I've got a apparently mental illness a thing that I used years later to absolutely de-identify and unacknowledge the label and pass with flying colours so while they're locking me up on the um, via conspiracy of oppression and punishment and which I had been um, warned by a doctor which is on Killing Blood Info that the next time I'm incarcerated they would frame me with a crime and I'd never get out and I'd be a victim of the state a, a prisoner of the state <laughs> now I'm a free man that's because I've done nothing wrong but I'm not free in a way now that lawyer framed me as an extortionist internally and I went through all the systemic agencies and I didn't find that out till after I had died, after no one defended me, after no one believed me about the pedophile, after no one intervened with the legal issue that Steve and I had and after no one um, offered any solace for me wanting to kill myself over the suicide of my friend and beautiful brother, Nathan Turnley, who no one knows because no one knows who I am. That's the life of a scapegoat. Now the GP lost his job and I was banned from two practices and another GP tried to give me hello, an overdose victim two boxes of endone at a time when I didn't die from an overdose because he knew I was distressed he banned me from the practice and sent me to drug and alcohol rehab <laughs> it's like a bad comedy um, the GP is not registered for GST although he's a sole trader and he is practicing in a new place and working in another location so to sum it up I'm banned from police Banned from any lawyer in the world. Banned from any ombudsman or complaint service. My life is in absolute heinous ruin. I don't have a cent. I am malnourished. I can't afford rent. I barely have human dignity. And I have zero worth. I have been exploited, demonized, and damned to hell. And you know why? Because I can turn this whole fucking government on its ear very fucking easily and it's with one thing my sentience and my authenticity and my honesty and because um I, I mean i've lived for a whole year under the poverty line whilst being attacked systemically by many agencies um and in that time, 
I only had about 40 or $50 a week to survive for average that. That is a life that has no dignity, it has no value, and the $22,000 I earned from when they first... I was on the DSP for another reason. They put me, while I was on sick leave, put me back on JobKeeper. I was expected after a suicide attempt and after already being on sick leave, which was fatal, and everyone covered it up, that they expected me to look for work. It's an abhorrent victimization. It's systemic and it's brutal and it's malicious and it's conscious and it goes right to the top. I had to reverse engineer this to find this out. The finance minister, Birmingham, rejected my compensation for the CDD scheme through detriment. The police covered up my murder and blacklisted me. My business was destroyed. I've suffered a brain injury. I've lost my family, who I love them, but they don't see justice. They see a poofta, a mad person, a drugo, and they like to exploit me because I think they're jealous. And because um, they've all been stamped with the um, card of move to the suburbs in the 60s, get married, pop out puppies and buy a house. And that was indelibly imprinted on all of my family who all sold their souls to the highest corporate um, person as, as slaves to get a um, mortgage, to get a house for something you can't take with you. Now, I'm glad I've had my life. All my friends have gone. All of them. My lovers have disappeared. I've had about four um, social workers that have all disappeared. I can't go to the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence. They reject me. I can't... I'm on the housing waiting list whilst still being owed the detriment of millions and millions of dollars. And I even offered, bribed, so many people, including my brother, my parents, I'll give you a hundred grand if you just simply reply to Steve's lawyer with a lawyer on my behalf. Because I can't. Because I'm character assassinated. And they all refused. I think they believe that um, that I can't look after myself and that um, I am a drain and a shame. But it's not my shame to have. It's actually their own conscious choice to reject justice and choose persecution and identify illness. <laughs> So soon, <coughs> I will lose a corrupt work cover case. It's probably a TPD now, and it goes on forever. So it's probably two million or more payout in detriment. That's because the government already conspired to kill me and then covered it up. I've only recently been oppressed and harassed by police and the mental health unit, who my family all ring up to report I'm unwell. When in fact, I'm starving <laughs> um, by police. Um, and I said to Hung, they have kicked in your front door. They have keys to the house. And I have absolutely nowhere in the world to be safe or have recluse. I had to abscond from the oppression because I believed I would have been framed. I jumped the back fence and drove to Bendigo, like Thelma and Louise, and they were after me. Um, via the Mental Health Act of a psychiatrist who, get this, I had never even met. Um, they incarcerated me recently. Um, it wasn't because of mental illness. And they very well knew that the delusions of persecution utterly and absolutely true 
because they are ones doing it. Um, it was oppression, victimization, vilification, and a punishment for wanting to die in their hospital and then sue them. No one in that saltwater clinic would cross the floor and no one in the entire world has crossed the floor to defend the human rights, dignity, worth, and very human value of me. So I got to hospital and I threatened to stay there until I got whistleblower status. Against the hospital, I was now captive in. That was a bit of a um, turnaround because they let me go. They said, you don't need to be here. You don't suit the criteria. And I'm like, I know. And they did not frame me with a crime. Um, however, I'm under investigation by HCF and the police and ASIO and people watch and the lawyers, many lawyers um, who look at me on um, LinkedIn's incredible. I've lost millions and millions and millions of dollars in detriment. I've lost my health. I can't feel my feet. I have suffered a categorically catastrophic existence for a long time. My phone is hacked. So is my computer. I'm closely watched. I can't even say that I sell kilos of heroin to the police because it's a standoff. Um, I'm rendered an illegitimate citizen of this country, a neutral, innocuous vagrant that is a mere grey, meaningless pawn in um, a democracy that has whistleblower rights and it has rights to do with the Charter of Human Rights of People with Disability. And every single public official has the um, responsibility and the obligation not to act outside of that law. And everyone has. So it's happened. I said to Hung, I'm a vagrant in your home. I trust no one. This is surely a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and is a vile, abhorrent and ungodly victimization and vilification of me. A person who spent 25 years advocating for other people. A person who wrote a human rights award winning book, rendering himself extremely courageous and extremely vulnerable to attack. I lost my job over that. I don't have one cent. I said to him, I can't pay you. And I said to him, you cannot kick a mentally ill, brain damaged pensioner onto the street from your house while COVID's going on. I haven't looked into the other rights yet. I'm hoping for um, a miracle. It's unfathomable as this whole systemic oppression that has been vile and heinous and conscious and systemic and universal via the government, via a few key sources and points of um, genesis. I mean, I can't fight the whole world. I've got no option, I said to him, but to stay here and squat. And that's his detriment. Unless they frame me with criminality, which I have evidence of, or kill me via um, prejudicing and persecuting me and attacking me silently via proxy so much that I give up and kill myself now that I've lost everything and everyone having been utterly nuclear character assassinated and scapegoated or they don't incarcerate me forever. So many laws have been broken. I could single-handedly turn this election. I could single-handedly 
destroy this country. But you know what they're going to do first before I do that? They're going to try and silence me. And they've already killed me and hoped that I'd die in the next whole year in poverty. And I haven't. And they will try and kill me first. They will choose to exploit and um, do away with me in whatever means possible, rather than for the systemic organisations and the people of public office and power and privilege and money protecting reputations and crime to be um, held accountable. So I'm basically already dead, a dead man walking. You just act to protect me from the rain. Um, uh, he has to act to protect me from the rain. I can't be left out in the rain. Look, where, where are those books going to go? Crystal's here. What am I going to eat? Minister Birmingham has rejected my CDD scheme. So did the Federal Police. Um, uh, Minister Reynolds, the NDIS minister, has condoned my vagrancy, sending me to um, a homeless shelter. One that didn't take me. And um, Minister Hunt, he knows all about it. Actually, a lot of ministers do. Even Dan Andrews. I thought he was a good bloke, but some why, somehow, someone's hands are tied. And I'm framed with madness when in actual fact it's um, it's it's a um, it's a metaphor or an allegory for being oppressed and not having food or medication and squatting. My family's abandoned me. My sister said you're a drugo and a schizo and get the fuck out of our lives. My brother, knowing full well and consciously that he rejected all of my justice issues, told me I've got fucking problems and that I live outside my means. While I was getting, get it, $255 a week on JobSeeker and my rent's 360 all my friends have gone because they're sick of this conspiracy. But it's bigger than Ben Hur. I can't have a light hearted conversation with a friend and listen to them go on about their lives and the troubles they've got and stuff when I've literally been murdered and covered up and at going to the highest level and they're going to destroy fucking Rich McLean. That's why I launched Killing.info. So this is my life. This is it. The, the psychiatrist noted in the hospital I'm malnourished. And I've now got cancer. I'm hungry without care, dignity, a home, medication, enough supplies, enough to literally exist, or the dignity of human value, and I'm utterly rejected. And everyone, my whole family, Bruce the millionaire, I mean, everyone works for Bruce, um, the whole family have identified or prejudiced me with half believable truths that have um, rendered me a scapegoat. Um, now, the... Um, Charter of Human Rights of People with Disability, from which I now identify, has it bound into the legislation and ratified by this country in 2008 that I have freedom from exploitation, freedom from torture, which is actually what this is, that I have access to the law, and litigation 
and that I have equity and equality before the law. That I have a home, that I have food, that I'm made aware of these rights that I've got, that I'm not oppressed, stigmatized, or denied justice. So I said to Hung, so what's your solution, Hung? I wish to know, because unless I was my own best friend, and I know if they kill me, they can't take my soul. The blood is already on their hands. I need not welfare, but I need my justice, and I need my voice heard, and I need my story told. And as I go along, I um, explicate the narrative of the tragedy of this oppression. I needed that justice very many years ago, 20 years ago, but the ship sailed. I'm a neutral, innocuous, infamous vagrant, famous with the government in my own country with whistleblower rights rendered you know, with all the um, flair of dirty dishwater, lower than shark shit. So I'm infamous. I need one single person to cross the floor. No one did. So I asked Hung, what's your solution? And I ask all you, what would you do if you were me?